A number of committee members expressed the view, as confirmed by the panel of experts, that the launches constituted a clear violation of Resolution 1929 and that therefore all member states should redouble their efforts to implement ballistic missile-related sanctions on Iran. Iran continued to seek items for its prohibited activities from abroad by using complex procurement methods, including front companies, false documentation and intermediaries. She further stressed the panel's assessment that Iran remains dependent on foreign imports for key components for its prohibited nuclear and missile programs, which indicates, of course, the ongoing relevance of the sanctions. We note with regret that Iran continues to breach its international obligations. The panel of experts, which I remind colleagues includes both a Russian and a Chinese expert, reached the clear and unanimous conclusion in January that Iran's ballistic missile launches last year during military exercises conducted by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps constituted a violation of paragraph 9 of Resolution 1929. If Iran's leaders want to bring all sanctions to an end and enable Iran to realize the benefits of a civil nuclear program, then they must comply with their international obligations and engage with concerns over the nuclear program. As my foreign secretary said recently, we look to Iran to consider carefully whether it wants to continue on its current course and face increasing pressure and isolation from the international community or to enter into meaningful negotiations. We hope that following the election of Dr. Rouhani, Iran will take a different course for the future, addressing international concerns about its nuclear program, taking forward a constructive relationship with the international community, and improving the political and human rights situation for the people of Iran. <laughs>